Hello you lovely Mario Maker person, my name is Steve and welcome back. Today we are going to do something slightly different. Recently I was wondering if it's possible to build logic gates in Super Mario Maker. And as it turns out it is. Logic gates are some of the most basic building parts of computers and it's possible to perform some basic computing tasks with them, like counting, storing information or doing calculation. I actually found a way to build AND, OR, XOR and NOT gates, which actually allow for some super basic computing in Mario Maker with some restraints. So at first we'll talk through the gates and afterwards we'll take a quick look on some basic things that are possible with these gates, including rebuilding the circuit and building a half adder in Mario Maker. So are you ready? Let's do this! So the first gate we are going to take a look at is the AND gate. We use questionnaire blocks as inputs and output for all gates in this video. This circuit always gets activated once a p-switch got triggered. So for an AND gate this means that this block and this block need to be set so that this block gets triggered. Our main source of electricity are buzzy beetle shells. This gate is actually pretty simple. Once the p-switch got triggered, this shell drops onto this spring. If both blocks on the bottom were activated, these shells trigger these blocks, which push the bullet bills upwards and allow the shell to hit this block. But if none or only one block was triggered, the shell can't hit the output. So let's take a look at the OR gate. An OR gate gives an output if one or both blocks were activated. This one is even simpler. Once the p-switch got triggered, this spring activates this shell. If one of the blocks at the bottom was triggered, the shells down there activated and triggered this block, which pushes the bullet bluster pill upwards and opens up the path to the output. A NOT gate means that the output block becomes blocked if the input was triggered and vice versa. This one is super simple. If this block gets pushed, this spring leaves his block prison and blocks the path for this shell, which would otherwise hit the output block once the p-switch got activated. Ok, so the XOR gate. This one only gives an output if one of the blocks got triggered, but not both. This one is the most complicated, but it's still not too crazy. Let's first take a look at it in action and talk through it afterwards. If one of the input blocks gets activated, one of the cannons gets transported to the right. We need one cannon there, because otherwise the shell won't hit the output. But if we trigger both input blocks, both cannons are transported to the right and block the path for the output shell. This one took me a while to figure out. Generally speaking, all the gates are built around the same mechanic. We always try to block or open the path for buzzy beetle electricity. We need two more gates before we can finally take a look at some logic machines. I won't talk through them in detail as they are super simple and similar to the ones before. If you want to study these gates in detail or you plan on building something with them, you can find the link to the blueprints in the description. This AND gate works similar to the one before, but the difference here is that this gate does not need a p-switch input and can be always used. This is especially useful if you want to link several other gates together, as we only need to trigger one p-switch. This one is the OR gate version without a p-switch. In case you were wondering what the symbols to the right mean, they show the right output according to the input setting. Alright, and now let's have some fun. From our ongoing series, what is the most complicated way to trigger a p-switch, I proudly present to you the AND AND OR solution. So how does this work? At first glance this might look a little bit confusing, but it's actually super simple. All we did here is adding three gates together. We have an AND gate and an OR gate, which are wired up to another AND gate. This means that if Mario triggers this block and this block and either this one or that one or both, the output shell gets activated and the p-switch triggered. 
So it's actually possible to transport an input vertically as well. Here Mario can't see which logic gate is at the top, but he needs to trigger the right questionnaire blocks in order for the power block to activate. If he hits both blocks, nothing happens and Mario is stuck in this stage for eternity. If he triggers only one block, however, the power block magically gets destroyed and he's able to beat this stage. Up there is a XOR gate, so the output shell only gets activated if Mario triggers one block, but not both. Ok, so let's rebuild this circuit in Super Mario Maker. This circuit doesn't do anything particularly useful. But hey, it's possible to build it. So here are our 6 input blocks. These two blocks lead to XOR gate, these two blocks lead to XOR gate as well and these two lead to an AND gate. The two XOR gates are wired to an AND gate and the two AND gates are wired to an OR gate again. So if Mario wants these munchers to die, he needs to either trigger one of these blocks and one of these blocks or these two. While we know what's going on, poor Mario has no idea. He needs to choose the blocks he triggers wisely, as triggering the wrong blocks will trap him in this room. Hooray! Mario chose a combination that actually works, as he triggered exactly one of each of the inputs which lead to XOR gates. So let's take a look at this overcomplicated power block triggerer. The first two inputs lead to this XOR gate, the next two inputs lead to this XOR gate and they're both wired to this AND gate. The inputs to the left end in this AND gate and both lead to this OR gate again. While this circuit isn't useful, it should be possible to use a clever combination of gates to build a really safe combination lock. By the way, if someone of you manages to write the complete truth table for this machine in a YouTube comment, I'll definitely leave you a like. Ok, so let's take a look on a Mario Maker half adder. This is what a half adder looks like in theory. A half adder is able to add two bits together. So if you enter no value, he outputs no value. If you set one bit, he outputs a one. And if you enter both, he outputs a two, which is represented by this output and actually called a carry bit. So if you set this up correctly, you are actually able to count one plus one in Super Mario Maker. So I sat down and tried to build this. I already had a XOR gate and an AND gate and I thought that this should be actually pretty easy to build. But as it turns out, there was a problem. Wiring. I always thought it's really hard to wire redstone up in Minecraft correctly as you can't put it on walls. But wow, I never tried to wire buzzy beetles up before. Here's what I came up with. I'll quickly explain what this does and then I'll explain the wiring or buzzy beetling or whatever. So to the right we have two questionnaire block blocks. These are our displays. Once the calculation is done we will see the result here after Mario went through this reset door. These blocks are our input blocks and represent the number 1 or 0. If we trigger a block we add 1 to the result. So triggering one of them shows us a 1 and triggering both of them shows us a 2. Alright, let's boot this thing up. Hooray! We are able to add two numbers smaller equal 1 together. So how does this work? Basically there is an AND gate and there is a XOR gate. If the XOR gate gives an output, the number is 1, otherwise the AND gate gives an output and the number is 2. The display uses the fact that vines in blocks respawn after a door reset, but empty blocks don't. In order to make the wiring work, we use spinies additional to buzzy beetles. Each input triggers a spiny and a shell. The shells move upwards to the XOR gate and the spinies move vertically and activate another shell mat which leads to the AND gate. And that's it for today and for logic gates and for being super nerdy. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and maybe you feel especially wired up today and want to hit the subscribe button as well. The next video will probably take a little bit longer than a week as I have no access to my Wii U for a couple of days. But I hope you have a wonderful day and to see you soon. Goodbye!